Hi friends, this episode of Big Blue Banter is brought to you by Prize Picks. Head on over to Prize Picks and use promo code BANTER and they'll match up to $100 on a new deposit. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome back. It's the Big Blue Banter, New York Giants football podcast. I'm Dan Schneier. Joined as always by my co-host, Nick Villato. And today we're here to talk a little bit about some Giants pre-draft buzz, Nick, because yesterday I thought was a very funny, interesting day from a buzz standpoint with the Giants. And this is Wednesday when we're recording. Um, I think the podcast will be out today. We're speaking about Tuesday yesterday. So Tuesday, uh, you know, Nick, it was April 9th, a good two and a half-ish weeks, two, two, two weeks and two days before the draft. For some reason, the Giants general manager, there was no set pre- press conference. There was no me- mandate by the NFL that you have to speak right now to reporters, the big name reporters, by the way, you know, a national NFL reporter who's going to report this and everyone's going to see this. You didn't see other GMs talking, Nick, but for some odd reason, Joe Shane, the Giants GM, decided to talk to Albert Breer of SportsIllustrated.com, and he told him, we don't, and for some reason he's giving away, and we'll talk about the reasons why we think the reasons why he's doing this after, but he's giving away information about the Giants and their draft, supposed information. Let's put it the air quotes on information. And Joe Shane tells Albert Breer, we don't want to be up here again. We don't want to be picking in the top 10. Shane told Albert Breer of SI.com. He says, we have multiple needs. We are going into year three. People assume we're going quarterback, but we have other needs. If the quarter, now listen to this, Nick. He says, point blank, if the quarterbacks go one through four, then we're getting the second best position player, not quarterback, at six. Okay, so he's literally just giving away the blueprint, apparently. And he says, that player really helped us. Even last year, our quarterback coach was at the CJ Stroud workout, spent a lot of time with Levis and Anthony Richardson. We spend a lot of time with those guys. And it's not just for right now. It's for when they become free agents. Brian Burns, we spent a lot of time with him in the trap process. So we feel comfortable making a trade for that guy. Drew Locke, same thing. Sam Darnold, we spent a lot of time with him because that was in the Josh Allen draft. So what are your rea- what's your reaction first to what Joe Shane said? Us going quarterback? No, of course <laughs> not. We would never go quarterback. We signed Drew Locke, everybody. We have Daniel Jones. Tommy Cutlets. You guys remember Tommy Cutlets? Tommy DeVito. We got that's my interpretation of this. Now that doesn't necessarily, Dan, mean that he is going to go quarterback, but he wants to throw as much cold water on the idea of the New York Giants going quarterback. That could be for trade purposes. That could be for a variety of reasons. But one reason that I'm that I'm pretty certain. It's not for is because Joe Shane has absolutely no interest in selecting a quarterback in this draft. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. I think he kind of pretty much says it point blank when he says we have other needs. If he had said, you know, we don't have any needs, that's another or or, I'm sorry, if he had said quarterback is not one of our needs, that's one thing. But in my opinion, you know, him saying if QBs go one through four, we'll just take the best positional player. He's all but confirming one quarterback is one of their needs. And two, he even qualified his draft scenario right there, Nick, where they wouldn't go a quarterback. So that means there are scenarios where they would go a quarterback, right? He's just essentially saying, I'm not going to force uh, the quarterback position. But to me, Nick, what really stands out is that he's literally giving, at least on paper here, the blueprint for what the Giants are going to do. He says, if QBs go one and four, we're getting the second best position player, not a quarterback at six. No GM is going to give their actual blueprint out two weeks before the draft to a national NFL reporter that he knows that is going to get um, you know, read by everyone, circulated by everyone. And if you want more further, I mean, that should be obvious to anyone. I mean, this isn't Dave Gettleman talking about Saquon Barkley or Dave Gettleman talking about Daniel Jones and the pre draft process. He's not a Dave Gettleman type. He never has been. I mean, that's its own type. But to me, Nick, what I'm saying there is why would we assume now that he's giving out the blueprint when we already saw a leaked report from the 2020? what was it, 2022 draft that said the Giants interview with Kayvon Thibodeau went horribly. It was a terrible interview, right? Like, this is such a bad interview. And then the Giants end up drafting Kayvon Thibodeau at five overall. At this, yeah, go ahead. So I don't know if the report actually suggested that the interview was bad. I thought it That's was what I more thought so, it was. No, it was more so just Kayvon Thibodeau got pressed by Brian Dable on, okay, it's week eight or whatever he said, and you don't have a sack, how are you going to react? And then Kayvon Thibodeau provided his answer. And I think a lot of like national media pundits interpreted that as, you know, a tough interview, not liking Kayvon Thibodeau, but I didn't interpret it that way personally. Now I could be missing something. Maybe there was other, um, other reports that suggest otherwise, but I think it was more of a media conjuring that, that idea rather than it actually being a bad interview put out by Joe Shane of the New York Giants. 
could be. I, I know what you're speaking about, what that was specifically you're talking about. I yeah. thought I remembered something else that was like a report, but maybe that was just the media deciding it was a bad interview or, you know, they, the, which is what I said earlier or what, what, Joe and Shane. Was, yeah. Joe yeah. Shane is not, um, is not unknown. No, no. Yeah. But and he's also, he was a part of Brandon Bean and the Buffalo Bills selecting Josh Allen, trading up to select Josh Allen. There was a lot of smoke screens before the, uh, the draft with Josh Allen as well, the 2018 draft about him and maybe not even smoke screens, but stuff dug up on his past. If you remember that leaked, I am not against True. the fact that NFL teams might do that. If they really love a player to find something that could throw some, some shade at a player to have that player fall. My point is right now is smoke screen season for a reason. All right, Nick, I'm going to shout out a few uh, of our maybe listeners, but uh, definitely I'm not sure if they listen to the pod, but they definitely follow us on Twitter or follow me on Twitter. I'm sure they follow you if they follow me and brought up some interesting reactions to the Joe Shane comments. And then we're going to get into some other reports today, by the way, because on the same day yesterday that that happened where Joe Shane gave away supposed information and blueprint two beat, two beat reporters reported sources that the Giants are interested in. <laughs> in trading up or they love a certain quarterback and they were different quarterbacks. And then another guy who's been on the beat forever mocked the quarterback, of the giants, who was a whole different quarterback. And I don't think that was coincidental, but we'll get into that in a moment. This is from Nick B. And I think he brings up an interesting point. He said, I read Joe Shane's comments. And to me, they sounded like a sales pitch to the Patriots of the Cardinals. And that pitch essentially being if four quarterbacks go in the top four, then our sixth pick is going to be the second best non quarterback. Why would they make a sales pitch like that? Now, this is me pontificating on that, Nick. Why they might make a sales pitch like that? Well, if you're telling the Pats or Cardinals, look, you might want to trade that pick down, but if you go to 11 with the Vikings or another team, you may not get that second best non-quarterback. If you come to us at six, you get the second best non-quarterback. What are your thoughts on that? 100%. Like I said, there's a variety of different scenarios, and that's a way to, in a non-direct way, communicate with every other NFL team by saying, we might be available because, you know, those four quarterbacks go. We have no control over that. But then you can now get that second best player, whoever that is, whoever that second best player is. You might have Joe Walt and Roma Dunze rank right. the same or Malik Neighbors, whatever it is. You can decide, Mr. General Manager. So, you know, come talk with us. So, yeah, absolutely. It could be that. Yeah. So say one of the quarterbacks they like falls to three or falls to four. Now, those teams, if they want to trade back Cardinals or Patriots, they can get a much better player on their board than if they trade to 11 with the Vikings or, you know, one of those other teams, Raiders, Broncos, who are in the mix to potentially trade up. So I think it's interesting from that standpoint, but I don't, they didn't read it totally and only as that. I think part of it is him saying, look, we're not going to force quarterback in this draft class. If the quarterbacks go one through four, like, I don't think he's giving away the blueprint, but I think he's also kind of saying like, look to other teams, look, we're not definitely in the market for quarterback. Cause I think there's the other side of it where he doesn't want everyone to know that they might be interested in trading up for quarterback. There's like two sides to this coin. What are your thoughts on that? hundred percent. Again, yeah. it could be any different variable. That's why this is not just, you can't just look at what Joe Shane said on its surface and say, that's what it is. It, it is putting a ton of different situations and scenarios out there that we, as people who cover the New York Giants, can sit here and attempt to interpret it, but I think it could easily be, we're interested in trading up. If you want to still a blue chip player, don't go all the way back to 11 because you might right. not get your guy. You can get your guy at six, and we're in the business to trade for pick three or pick four or whatever team they're communicating with. So if it's the Patriots, Patriots, what do they need? They need wide receivers. There are going to be two, possibly two wide receivers who are available at six. And then you have the Arizona Cardinals. What do they need? They can use wide receivers. They just yep. went offensive tackle last year with Paris Johnson, but they could also use some offensive line help. They can use defense. But my point is, man, the Giants are in business. What's going on, Big Blue Banter listeners? I'm excited for the football season for several reasons. And one of those reasons is Prize Picks, which is North America's largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform. And it's so simple to use. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including professionals, sharks, and people who are going to exploit you, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and you just watch the winnings roll in. It's very simple to play and gives you a little extra skin. I've set my picks in less than 60 seconds. There are so many stats to choose from, and the withdrawals of funds are easy and quick. Dan and I will be adding a segment to our show before every game where we pick our favorite stats 
more or less yards or touchdowns, what have you, and we'll be discussing why from a scheme, matchup, and game theory perspective. I love their promotions and how easy their interface is to operate at prize picks. I may select more on tackles for a loss from Bobby Okereke or Kayvon Thibodeau next game. They also do other sports as well. It's a really cool experience. Please join Dan and I in the fun of prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash banter and use code banter for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash banter and use code banter for a first deposit match up to $100. You will not regret it. You ever feel sluggish or out of focus? Are you stressed? Has your digestive system caused discomfort or flatulence like a certain co-host on this podcast during a live stream? If so, you should check out AG1. When I started drinking AG1 daily, I could feel a real difference in my daily health. I had more energy, I was better off at the gym, and I could focus on my work in a much more efficient manner. That's because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. Not only did I replace my multivitamin with AG1, but I love that every scoop also includes prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for gut support. I recommend AG1 to all my family and friends because AG1 has a team of doctors and scientists that formulate around the latest science and maintains high quality standards within the industry. Even my friends have started drinking AG1, and they always tell me how energetic they feel and how it's helped them out at the gym, and also it's helped them manage their stress levels. That's why we're happy to have AG1 as our partner. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs when you first subscribe. Go to drinkag1.com slash banter. That's drinkag1.com slash banter to check it out. Our mental and physical well-being is of the utmost importance. Whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster like me, we all need to take that very seriously. That's why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of the Big Blue Banter podcast. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System, or EE System. If you haven't heard of the EE System yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're here in New York, New Jersey, Arizona if you will, or hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. Interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash banter to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash banter. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare providers with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment. And before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, include EE system. Yeah, Nick, and that business could also be the other side of it, right? Because uh, I'll shout out Andrew who brought up this. He interpreted it as Shane saying, uh, Shane's comments as saying, I want talent to, he wants talent to drop to him. So for example, he thinks this is egging on teams to trade up past the giants, right? If you're wide, if you love a certain wide receiver and you're kind of telling the public, look, we're not going to go quarterback. We're not forcing quarterback that may give another team behind them, the mindset or the go ahead to, okay, we can get aggressive. We can trade up ahead of the giants knowing that they're not going to take a quarterback or they're not going to quote unquote trade up for a quarterback, which is interesting too. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if it's also like, hey, if anybody wants to trade up to our pick, trade back, get that number two or second right. player too. I don't think it's necessarily that. I think it's more so if it's anything, again, it could be any different scenario. It more so is communicating with the Cardinals and the Patriots to trade up. I really like that take. 
or it's just them putting a bunch of stuff out there to see what hits and to see how other general managers interpret it while them, the New York Giants, understand what their overall plan is. They have a bunch of different avenues to achieve said plan, but they just want that out there. And that's right. something that I can respect from Joe Shane's standpoint. I can too, Nick, because I think what we've seen throughout this draft process and the previous two years of draft process, a lot of information, misinformation, good information, a lot of just throwing a lot of different things out there from Joe Shane to kind of keep thing, keep them on our toes and not have anybody really understand what they're doing. Cause you know, this could also read to some as like a for sale sign to teams behind them, the bears, the jets to trade up to six, right? Because you know, you can, they're saying you can get the second best non quarterback in the draft give us your future, whatever, and your ninth or 10th pick, whatever it may be, and come get it from us. If people think the Giants may be considering trading back, which I think is in the play as well. So I think all of that is interesting, Nick. But what I really want to get to on this podcast is what it could mean that we see on the same day as Joe Shane making those comments, Jordan Ronan, one of the Giants' most biggest, you know, ESPN's beat reporter for the Giants, reporting the Giants love Jaden Daniels and Jaden Daniels is their guy. On the same day that Pat Leonard, who, you know, people have their qualms with Pat Leonard, and I as well have that. I think a lot of the time he writes things that are just generally designed to kind of like stir the pot and like in a Stephen A. Smith kind of way, which, you know, at the same time, I do kind of respect in some degree because like that's how Stephen A. made his money. That's how Skip Bayless made their money. And that that's in today's world, like you can make a lot of money being, you know, controversial and just saying things to say things. But as far as his sources go, dude, he hasn't been that bad. Like he said, Kadarius Tony's going to get traded. Kadarius Tony, he didn't show up to, I don't know if it was like OTAs or minicamp. I'm not hundred percent certain, but he was like a day or two late to that. And we were all like, yo, where the hell is Kadarius Tony? Shouldn't you be training with your teams? Your second year, <laughs> Brian Dable's now the coach. You want to make right. a nice impression on him. And then he showed up like two days later and everyone's like, see, he's here. There's not an issue. And then Pat Leonard came out shortly after saying the giants were going to trade Kadarius Tony. Everyone kind of piled on Pat Leonard. He was 100% right there. So his sources have been dialed in in the past. Agreed. And that was also led to Joe Shane be telling him to reflect on what I say, which ultimately, yes. you know, you know, we love that quote. But in the end, Joe Shane did end up trading Gary Sony. And that wasn't the first time. He also was the first to report the Odell Beckham Jr. potential trade. And the Giants were looking to trade Odell Beckham Jr., which Dave Gettleman obviously famously said we didn't sign him to trade him and then ultimately did trade him. So Pat Leonard has hit these in the past. So he reports the Giants love Drake May. They want to trade up through Drake May. Jordan Ronan reporting the Giants want Jaden Daniels. And then Paul Schwartz, who's one of the most long-tenured beats. And to me, Paul, I've said this before, I'll say it again. My interpretation of this Giants beat situation from following this team for 12 years or however long I've been seriously obsessed with this whole team and everything before I even covered the team, Nick, is that Schwartz and Vacchiano are are somehow connected to the to the family because I feel like they're the ones who get the real quotes. And I feel like Vacchiano stuff feels very, very much like sometimes like I'm reading Giants.com at times where it's just total team based takes and like defenses of players that are just feel very from the ownership. But, you know, uh, Schwartz came out and said, and 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 he didn't say he didn't report it like um Ronan and Leonard did. They legitimately were reporting like, you know, Giants love Daniels and Giants love May, and they're trying to trade up. But he did a mock, and in his mock, he mocked JJ McCarthy to the Dan to the Giants, and he said within his mock, there's no need for him to play right away. And the Giants believe he said the Giants, he didn't say I believe, he said the Giants believe his skill set and temperament, and this is JJ McCarthy, are natural fits at the next level. So on the same day, dude, as Joe Shane making those comments and quote unquote, giving away their blueprint. There's leaks apparently about who the giants love from two of the biggest read reporters and a mock. Let's just go with the two leaks though. So what is this telling me? Nick? The way I interpret this is that Joe Shane may be purposely leaking information to these beat reporters through his people that work within the giants organization to try to find out where the leaks are. If there are any leaks within the giants organization, this now may seem like a uncommon thought to giants fans, because obviously during the Dave Gettleman area, there were obvious leaks there and they were just kind of allowed to come through and, you know, no one really cared. Dave just kind of gave away the plan all the time. Barkley gave away. Jones, he gave away. And then if you date back further, Nick, Jerry Reese had an even bigger issue with leaks. Now, some have suggested Mark Ross was the leak. I don't know if I believe that, but I know, understand why you would go that direction, and it's a fun theory. But Jerry Reese had the worst leaks of all. I have it on record, and I've said it once before on the set. I'll say it again on the podcast. I have it on record from a former NFL coach that the only reason 
the draft happened with Eli Apple, the way it happened is because it was leaked to them in NFL team. That wasn't the giants that the giants love Leonard Floyd. And then a team went from 11 to nine traded one pick ahead of the giants to select Leonard Floyd in that draft. It literally played out exactly as the coach told me it would because there were actual true leaks within the Giants organization during the Jerry Reese era that led to the whole Eli Apple debacle where now Reese is panicking. Ah, uh, what do I do? What do I do? I guess Eli Apple. <laughs> I guess Eli, it was crazy that pick. I guess yeah. we'll go Eli Apple there. I mean, like, and so there were leaks within the organization at one point. That to me is not even up for debate. I mean, you could, you could, you could say I don't have proof on it and I don't have full proof on it, but I have a good source on that. It's an actual coach who traded up to, from 11 to nine. So I wonder if all this came out on one day, Nick, because Joe Shane is trying to find out where the leaks are and is trying to purposely leak misinformation. Do you think there's any possible credence to that conspiracy theory? There's credence to it. I think it's more so though, just the giants obfuscating what they're actually going to do, which mm -hmm. every team does at this point. They're just basically saying, look, we could go this way. It could be deliberate information being passed out. I don't know if it's necessarily to find a leak. But because Joe Shane weeded out a lot of people when he came in after that first draft. And I'm imagining that some of the some of the people that he did retain, I would have to imagine they're going to be tight lipped because you're right. Going back to that Jerry Reese draft with the Eli Apple, I wasn't even covering the New York. Job. I was just a Giants fan at that time. And I was like, this is exactly what's happening. I knew me. I didn't know about anything. I knew that the New York Giants wanted Leonard Floyd. In that draft class, I knew the New York Giants wanted an right. offensive tackle in that draft class, and they got jumped for both. It was nuts. I don't see. I, I give it a little credence, but I think it's more so them just keeping the uh, image of "Hey, we could do anything" in the anything. rest of the NFL. Okay. Have fun figuring it out. I think Joe Shane is savvy when he, when he talks to the media and he understands what he's doing, and it's more deliberate than him just kind of flippantly saying, "Oh yeah, well we're just going to get the second best player in the draft that's not a quarterback." Would you make, what would you make then of, I, I agree with you on the Shane side of that. What would you make then of on the same day to the bigger reporters reporting a source that the Giants love a specific player, one I, being Daniel? I, I think that could have certainly been passed down mm -hmm. from somebody in the front office. It was put out there to the media. So the media would put out a bunch of different names on the same day that Joe Shane is saying that they might not go quarterback or at least insinuating that they might not go quarterback just to create that image that you have no idea all right. 31 other teams, what the New York Giants are doing. We could Which trade back. Great. We could trade up. We could select a quarterback at six. We could select a non-quarterback at six. Best guess, we're going to entertain every single option, and we are going to maximize us having the sixth overall pick in a draft class where teams might be willing to trade up or we might be willing to trade up to get our guy. They could have their guy identified. And I would not be shocked if that guy is Drake May. One of those reports could be true. There could be a leak. Right. It could be Drake <laughs> May. And if you look at Drake May, Drake May had a lot of similar issues to Josh Allen. Brian Abel, Joe Shane, linked to Josh Allen. He's big. He's physical. He's tall. He can rip the ball 60 yards downfield. He has a lot of those similar traits to Josh Allen. They're not similar prospects, I don't think, but similar traits. And there's the Eli Manning connection. Drake May is working with Eli Manning in the offseason. You might be like, eh, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Dude, if there's one non-Mara and Tish family <laughs> member that has a lot of stay in the New York Giants organization yeah. and is linked directly to the New York Giants, it's Eli Manning. So it could just be that simple, too. Right. And also, of course, the Giants, you know, Joe Shane was at six of his games last year. That's yes, that's very important. And, to, to and it seems like there's a pipeline there with Mac right. Brown and UNC. Right. Joe that's Shane, I don't know. Thing. Yeah. Joe Shane selected Marcus McKeithen and Josh Azudu a year out of that school. Yes. Right. 2021. That's another interesting take you know, a connection as well there. And, you know, the way I maybe interpret this, uh, both the combination of Jane's comments and then the leaks, the potential leaks, let's call them. We don't know if, you know, those are actual sources yeah. from Ron on and, and Leonard that may end up being true is Joe Shane. It, let's say you are Joe Shane. And let's say what you would like to do in the right scenario, if the right quarterback starts to fall is trade up for a quarterback. You don't want to make that obvious. You want to make teams unclear. And you even may want to lead them in the direction of you not feel like with the comments he made of thinking, oh, we don't need quarterback. We'll take the best on a position player. Because obviously, if you don't, you're losing a shit ton of leverage in the trade talks. If you want to eventually make that trade up, you don't want to have to give up an arm and a leg. You want to give up the minimum amount of assets in addition to your six overall pick that you possibly can in that scenario. And if you lead on, if you know, if everything that you're leaking or everything that is out there in the public is saying, wow, the Giants are desperate to move up for this quarterback. They love this quarterback. They have to get this quarterback. Now you've just lost so much leverage in your trade discussions. But if the other side of it is, you know what? F it. We don't, we want quarterback, but we got other needs and we want to build the team out. And it's year three. 
you know, when you get to that trade discussion, maybe just maybe you're not, you don't have as much leverage. Now I always find that part interesting, Nick, because I think like, I always think about this as a fun discussion to have real quick. Like if you're like trading up, right. Or you're in the NFL, you're a GM. If I'm a GM of like the, let's say it's the Patriots and I decide I don't want a quarterback, I'm totally lying to GMs and being like, yeah, the Vikings are giving me this and this and this giants. Like you got to match this offer. Like who holds them accountable? Like do the giants cross check and then call the Vikings GM and be like, did you really just offer this and this and this for this pick? Like, no, that's yeah. not happening. Right. So you have to like, it's a game of cat and mouse and it really does 100%. become like it, it like how good you are at negotiating and how good you are at playing the market, how good you are at reading bluffs and how good you are at just reading the situation it's phone poker bro yes it is phone poker which is why i love it like <laughs> joe shane but it's important for us as giants fans to understand that joe shane has to do his best job at playing this poker hand if he does want to trade up if he sits at six yeah. whatever it's easy money you just sit at six you take the player you want but if you're trading up or back and this happened last year when they traded up one spot with deontay banks you have to really read the situation very well to understand it and you don't want to get caught you don't want to get got because if you move up from six to three let's say you're a giant you love drake may and you made it so obvious if you give up like your future two and a one and then something else you're just getting fleeced at that point that's why you need to know the worth of the player that you're trading up for too and not right. to overpay and i think joe shane is a general manager who does understand that he understands a player's worth if somebody outbids him Hey, we have another plan. We have a backup plan. Plan A, we have plan B, we have plan C, plan D. Really accelerated when you're on the phone and the clock is ticking and other teams are also trying to trade up. That's a high stress, I know, high right? leverage situation situation that really sets your franchise up completely differently Crazy. in the future. So um, I'm, I, I trust Joe Shane in those situations, at least so far. He hasn't made any moves from a trade standpoint that have made me second guess him, even the Darren Waller trade. Look, I, I get it, but if you're all in that season, you make that trade. If that's the direction that you're taking the franchise, it didn't work out. But from a trade standpoint, I've agreed with, I think everything he's done so far. What about you? I would agree. For me, the process has been phenomenal. I would say there are great moments within the process from a trade standpoint and from that, uh, you know, like I think the Brian Burge trade is an amazing move. To, I know you're giving up a yeah. pick, but you're getting a player that's very hard to find in a draft. Like yes. edge rushers are not like, even if I look at this edge class, dude, like I don't personally see anybody who I think is definitely a lock to be better than Brian Burns in this edge class. And I think there's a good chance a lot of these guys just don't end up working out. If like, Latu stays healthy, Latu could be like, oh, yeah, yeah. He could, there, yeah. there's upside to some of them. There's ceiling plays that are definitely higher, but then they also have floors within them. Latu's injury history is, is a big floor for me, like yes. a big concern. Um, and even like Latu is an interesting one because I remember watching Jalen Phillips. I've seen little Latu. I had a, I, I think I, if I do do a full as general, I'll have a higher grade on Phillips from what I just saw, just from like briefly watching them and seeing, what do you think about that? Isn't, it, isn't it funny because both of them had career ending injuries. That's why I'm connecting. connecting both them. of them yeah. were at UCLA at one point. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Who's you who, from, from what you've seen on film? Hmm. I, I was a big fan of, of Jalen Phillips coming out of Miami. I would need to do a little bit more work on Liatu, I, I think, okay. but I, there is part of me that that wants to say Phillips with a little bit more of a power profile than Leonardo, but yes. Leonardo, man, he's from what I've seen, he's, quick. he's great with great with his hands, quick, can bend the edge. He can do kind of everything, right? He and can. he's not like terrible against the run either. So like I feel like I, he I don't has know. multiple pass rush moves, which I like about him too. Like he does. he's not just a one track guy. So like I like the top edges in this in this draft class. And I know that they might not be the, the best edges that have come. They're not Miles Garrett, but like sure. him and Verse, I'm like, I'm high on both of those players. But at 39, you're probably not getting you're definitely not getting a Brian Burns at 39. No. Obviously. Yeah, right, right. right. And no, we know like, that. I don't think you still have to pay yeah. the guy, but like it just and it, it's just I like that move. But as far as being bringing it back to what you're saying, even the Darren Waller thing to me, it's like <laughs> people are so mad at that move. And the part of it that to me is worse even though I understand it fully is the restructuring of the contract and pushing back to get, because when they made that trade, the Raiders had paid out all the bonuses. The Giants just left that contract as it was, Nick. They could cut Waller right now with zero dead cap. Instead, they're going to have six or seven million of dead cap yeah. if he retires or they cut him. So it's the one thing, but I understand at the time you want to push for in, you structure the Jones a certain way, you want to bring in Sean Robinson, you want to bring in Bobby Okereke, you want to try to improve your team that made the playoffs. That to me is fine. And as far as like what they gave up, that's the thing people don't consider. They gave up nothing in my mind. They gave up a hundredth overall pick, right? Like we have to stop overrating nothing though. To me, it's to me, it's close to it's it's relatively I agree with you. It's not nothing from our standpoint because we could track the draft and love guys that'll be there on the board at Andre. Yeah. But if we really take a step back and look at the type of players that come out uh, you know in the NFL and are successful at pick a hundred, 
it's so few and far in between. These guys mostly end up being busts or special teams players, which is fine, but you can find special teams players in round six, like Gary Brightwell, or maybe situations. It's just more players. it's it's more kicks at the can. It and kicks I know you at the un- can, right. And I and I know you understand that, but for, for me, when it just when you just look at Darren Waller and that trade, like I said a little earlier, if you're going all in, you needed to find Daniel Jones a number one right. passing target. You needed to do that. And Darren Waller was available for the pick 100. You make that trade all day. Didn't work out. Not It's not always going to freaking work out. Okay? Right, right. It's a kick at the can that you're giving up, like you said. And it is good to have those dart throws and a rookie contract. But a lot of the time, those dart throws just miss the board. And then it's like, Darren Waller, you knew if he stays healthy, he's not going to miss the board. He's going to help Daniel Jones if he stayed healthy, which I guess is part of the, the fact. And it was like a it was like a zero percentile outcome, though. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It was got like, oh, the worst possible exactly. outcome. He got injured in training. He got injured in like August and never recovered from that August injury. And, just and that had was the risk. Injuries. Yeah, that was the it risk. was. It just shouldn't have like even but like even that percentile, Nick, like that didn't ha- like the two years before that where Darren Waller was injured both years, right before he came to the Giants. He had bad luck both years. He still played a little bit like he still played more than the one year with the Giants. And you you want to know what gave Joe Shane the hubris to to make that trade once he decided on on going all in on Daniel yeah. Jones? It was that the strength department kept the soft tissue injuries down during the 2022 season, right. and they were down right. so significantly over True. or since the 2021 season. But it's also that coincides well with Kadarius Tony being traded off the team, and that guy probably made up 90 percent of the soft tissue injuries in the 2021 season. You're not wrong. Um, <laughs> just to wrap, you're definitely not wrong about that. Just to wrap it up here, I give Shane kudos for, in my opinion, putting out a lot of information. Very hard to pin down what the Giants want to do right now. Even I see people we talk to every day, Nick, at least on Twitter that I talk to. It's like, this has been a roller coaster ride the last two months. I have no idea what they want to do. And I just want to recap and bring up how different it was under Jerry Reese because I mentioned the, the, the Leonard Floyd leak. That wasn't the only one. If you look back, there was like a history of two or three straight years, Nick. Oh, yeah. This is when I think you were overseas. Um, where Ralph Acchiano was somehow guessing the Giants first round pick, predicting the Giants first round pick perfectly. He predicted Jason Pierre Paul, which is only possible with a league. Like that's the 16th overall, whatever. It was a mid first round pick. Like you can predict the top five pick easily. Like, oh, you say like, oh, the Giants want this guy. Like, and they didn't leak Thibodeau. We didn't know. But if they had leaked Thibodeau, like if it was Jerry Reese, we probably would have known it was Thibodeau. It's top five pick. There's not that many scenarios. But if you're predicting things like Jason Pierre Paul at 16 overall, like that is leak. Like that you have a source like that the Giants love this guy because Jason Pierre Paul was at the time projected as potential late first round pick. Some people even thought second round, very developmental player. The Giants loved his tape and they loved his upside and they made that pick and Bacchiano got that right. And he had like a string of like two or three years in a row where he got it right. And like, that just doesn't happen anymore with Joe Shane. Like they're not getting picks, right? Like people saw maybe Deontay banks, but that's more just us evaluating the class and being like, he's a great corner and he's a great value at 25. That's not us being like, it was leaked. The giants love Deontay banks. They're at every pro day. They're at every this and that. And the, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I read the Lindy's Sports 2010 NFL uh-huh. Draft magazine back to front. And there was another one that was really famous as well. And I remember hearing we got Jason Pierre Paul. And when those magazines came out, it was like before the combine or right at the combine. So Jason Pierre Paul was not ranked that high. So I had no other information on Jason. I didn't get, right. get to watch the college football season, but I could sit here and name some players from that magazine. Like, Mike Williams, rest in peace, ex Syracuse. who used to say Marty Gilliard from Cincinnati, like these wide receivers who didn't really do all that. Mike Williams was okay, but Marty Gilliard just kind of flamed out in the NFL. Man, I I, I love those magazines, man. And I remember when Tyson Alualu ended up going in the first oh, round. Yeah. And he was like ranked so low in May. I was like, what the hell happened here? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do remember <laughs> that as well. Tyson Alualu. It, the draft coverage has changed so much from even just 2010 to now. It's wild how much it, how much has expanded and how much more like the actual like film analysis there is now on these prospects and real actual grading there is. It used to really just be like you said, like a lot of that like just baseline type of information. Yeah, um, and so I couldn't really, get enough of it. I couldn't get enough. Of yeah, it it's still fun. It was still fun to consume for sure. Um, but anyway, that's what we wanted to talk about today. Joe Shane putting out smoke screens. Um, I'm excited to see what eventually happens here. Uh, I would just say that, you know, your guess is probably as good as ours at this point, as far as what the Giants are going to do eventually in this draft, which is good news, Nick, for us, because it makes it fun and it keeps people interested. Um, I've talked about some before with you, Nick, as happy as I would be to hear the Giants traded up to one to take Caleb Williams. Oh, because there's not no scenario. I know it's impossible now at this point. The Bears are not going to pass. But I saw, they, I saw, I I saw a report. To, I think I saw a report today that Washington oh. tried, and the Bears were like, "Bro, yeah, on, they're, they're, they're like, we're not going to do this thing." You got to say I, though, I, it is. It's the season of gas, bro. It's the season yes. of gas. Uh-huh.
<laughs> there you go. That, that, that was that was just a sound bite, not Dan. Yeah, and the, the Nick has also had some, by the way, on the pod that I've that we're gonna we're gonna resurface. <laughs> we're gonna I'm gonna look back at the tape, and I really think I'll find some that you've like, that you've dropped that one. Like, I will look back at the tape. But it would anyway, be very yeah. impressive if we never did. You know, it's just you gotta <laughs> contain it, right? You have to. Have, yeah. You have a silencer <laughs> built in. You gotta use the silencer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right. Anyway, keep it locked and loaded. More content coming. Uh, trying to get uh, i'm trying to wrangle a time with a certain guest that i think you guys are going to really like uh, i hinted at him before on a, on a previous show and then we're going to have some 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 classic guests back on we're going to talk with Cy. we know you love the side podcast we're going to get him on at some point and we're going to do a live show soon so we gotta we gotta hammer that down but anyway more content coming please keep it locked and loaded i forgot to this at the beginning but please hit the like button please hit the subscribe button if you're on youtube Please make sure you help support the show in the ways that you can. And that would just, again, be liking, be subscribing, be downloading on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you get it. Rate the show. We haven't even, I haven't even looked at that in years, but hopefully we're good on that front. So thank you. Have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you soon.